Welcome back. We have another amplifier board test video for you. This is not your typical TDA, TPA, or PAM type chip. This is a Yamaha based chip. It's the YDA148. So that will be quite interesting to see how this thing performs. Here's a close up of the board. Let the camera focus catch up. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. As you can see here, it is fully filtered outputs. Two per side because it is a bridge type configuration. It's designed to run on about 12 volts, but it'll handle up to 16 volts, I believe. And there's the little chip right there. There is no heat sink. But they do have a large area on the back where they run bias through and dissipate heat into the board. But still, I don't know if that's enough for 4 ohm loads. I kind of have to keep my eye on the temperature. The chip itself is capable of 4 ohm loads. So, like I say, we'll just test that out. Uh, another thing I see here, it does not have any sort of connector, so I'm going to have to solder some leads onto it so I can hook it up to my preamp and my uh, uh, speakers and load resistors and all that good stuff. It has a volume control, and that's about it. Just the nice little board here, and we'll try that out. This board was sent to me from a viewer in Jerusalem, Israel. So that's pretty darn cool having a viewer from a distant country sending things in. And uh, he says here he's sending me this amp. And he wants to know why, it, to him, it's the best sounding. He's tried the other uh, Class T, Class D, and always returned to this. And he wants to have me test it out and see why it is uh, why it sounds so good to him and he has another question there that I may or may not be able to answer okay so I will hook this thing up and do our usual listening test first and we'll move on to the power test and take a look at the distortion and all that good stuff Okay, I soldered on some leads so I can plug it into my socket board here. As usual, the music will come in from the music player into the preamp. And I have the outputs connected to speakers. And power supply for our power. Okay, we'll give it a quick listen here. That is Robin Trower, Two Rolling Stoned, off of his Bridge of Size album. Very good album. And by the way, that's not him singing. That's his vocalist, James Duar. I should say the late James Duar passed away quite a few years ago. No relation to the James Duar that invented the Twinkie snack cake. But yeah, that's a very good album. I'd check it out. And in my future amp test videos, I'm always going to play a little snippet of music I think is good. And I'll put a little historical trivia along with it. But for now, I have to select the YouTube safe music so I can demonstrate the amp. And let me do that here. Sounds very clean and clear, at least as far as my camera here can interpret it. But another thing I noticed is the noise is extremely low on this amplifier. It has very clean, low level sound. I checked that now because of the PAM 8610 Class D amps I tested had a lot of noise and it was really distorted at low sound levels so just want to make sure I give that a pass very good here there's no distortion at low levels and 
low noise. One thing I noticed about this amplifier, it has a clipping detection circuit. And what that does, it backs off the volume if it thinks it's about to clip. I know they use that a lot in uh, car stereos nowadays. But in a way, it can take dynamics away from the music. I know when you crank it up, it seems to kind of flatten out the music dynamics a little bit. You don't get that punch as much. And we'll take a look at the data sheet. I think it shows how that's set up. And it might be modifiable. Here's the data sheet for the YDA-148. Yep, it is a Yamaha product. You can pause if you want to read all this stuff. Distortion information. This is the pinouts of the chip and has that non-clip selection terminal where you can uh, set that up. Here is a distortion graph across the power band at 1 kilohertz. So that 1 milliwatt dips below 0.1 and of course it shoots up when it clips. So you know, main listening region is really low distortion. Here is the noise. It's down about 100 dB, you know, negative 100 dB. So that's why we didn't hear a lot of noise with this amplifier. But this data sheet is very long. So if you want to uh, look at it more, just look up that part number. Power test time. So we'll start with the 8 ohm loads connected to both channels. Maximum clean power before clipping. I guess I'll have to read the data sheet because it certainly allows me to clip. And I'll tune out the clipping harmonics. Or I should say the harmonics caused by the clipping. I'm getting 7.7 .7 volts RMS output. Of course, the blue waveform is the spectrum analyzer. That's the 1 kilohertz harm um, fundamental. And this is the built-in 4.5 pilot signal. So you can see there, there's no distortion, just the noise. And a lot of that's going to be from the scope front end anyway, because we're, you know, if I turn it up any higher, you just get more noise. So that's looking very good there. Okay, I think I said 7.77 volts RMS squared divided by 8 ohm loads. And we're doing 7.5 watts. Not too shabby, really. And that's at 12 volts, by the way. So I will continue taking more measurements at different supply voltages. I'll do 4 ohms as well. May not be able to do as many measurements at 4 ohms because this thing does not have a heat sink other than the copper area on the back of the PC board. And, you know, I don't think it'll be enough to dissipate all the heat it'll make at 4 ohm loads. But I'll get some numbers, take some other measurements, and come back with the results. And here are the results from the power tests. Of course, these are the RMS voltages I entered into the spreadsheet to have it calculate the output power here. So this is the power output from the 8 ohm loads, and this is from the 4 ohm loads. At 11 volts, the chip was getting very hot. I couldn't put my finger on it. But I went ahead and got a 12 volt measurement anyway, just to see what it would do. And it runs down to 7 volts, so that's pretty nice. It actually cut out around 6.7 volts or so. But I just said a minimum supply voltage of 7 volts. And I took measurements up to 16 volts. And we got 12.75 watts of clean power out. Here is the graph. This is the 8 ohm load line and the 4 ohm load line. The way the 4 ohm load line diverges, you can see it gets wider as we crank up the supply voltage. 
that tells me it's handling the forum loads just fine. But because the board really doesn't have that good of heat sinking, I just can't push the thing as hard as I'd want to. So if it had a better heat sink, it would put out a lot more power. So there you have it, the Yamaha YDA148 Class D Stereo Chip Amp Board. Sounds very good to my ears, has very low background hiss, wide supply operating voltage. The quiescent current, I forgot to mention, is 40 milliamps at 12 volts. Doesn't really change much over the voltage range. So that's great for battery power. Seems to have more than enough gain for your music players, so you don't have to blast the thing as loud as you can. It has a uh, built-in volume control. A couple things I didn't like. I'm not crazy about the uh, automatic clip detection. I'll have to read the spreadsheet on that. I think it kicks in more at lower frequencies. And uh, it would be nice if they gave you connectors, but that's okay. If you put it in a box or anything, it's usually better just to solder up the wires for the best connection. So I think it's a great little board. The one issue, though, is, you know, where do you get them at? This was sent to me. I did a quick search on eBay, and I didn't see it available there. But they had other Yamaha amp boards. And I might buy some. This was performing very well. So I would like to try some other Yamaha boards and see how good they work. But hey, you know, if you want to take the time and Google for me and reply in the comment section uh, if you find this board, uh, I'd appreciate it. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.